The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. Reaper Apparel offers a casual line of superb fit, finish, and comfort. We design for those who refuse to die slowly and choose to live untamed. For those who aren't afraid to face the dark, for the ones that thrive in it, and for those who can appreciate life through a grim lens. That's Reaper Apparel Company. Go to the link in the description of this episode, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. I have hats, I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, water bottles, notebooks, you name it, I've got it. The description and the link for that will be in the description of this episode. Also, right now, if you use the promo code WELCOME, I will give you 5% off of your first purchase. That's the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, the Rod Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Tactical Brotherhood. All American Made Apparel, which helps support the Second Amendment. You can also find all this in the description of this episode with the link Tactical Brotherhood. Part of every proceed does go to helping veterans, as it is a very good cause. All American-made products made right here in Minnesota. Go and check them out. Use the promo code PATRIOT15 to get 15% off your purchase. Now, let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. This is, as always, your host, Mike Bono. I have a great episode for us today, but first and foremost, I do have to get this new sponsorship read in that didn't air at the beginning, and that is Buddy's Beard Care. Beard oils, cleaning, face washes, and balms, everything you're going to need to keep your beard looking healthy, shiny, and well-maintained. I've been using this now for a little over a month now. My beard has never felt healthier. It has never... Uh, been as full and as thick as it has, and according to my wife, has never been softer. That being said, go to buddiesbeardcare.com. Tell them Mike Bono sent you. You won't be disappointed. It's Buddy's Beard Care, where size does matter. That all being said, my guest today, he is an administrator at Notre Dame College. He's a former college soccer player and a college soccer coach. I do believe we're going to get into all of that. Pat Savelic joins the show. Pat, I hope I didn't butcher your name, but thanks for joining. Uh, it's perfect. Thanks so much uh, for for having me. Um, re- really appreciate you having me on. And, uh, and before uh, I go to any further, um, um, happy early New Year to you. Ah, thank you. No problem. Absolutely. Happy New Year to you and yours as well. But so, Pat, for the listeners out there, tell everyone about, you know, where a little bit where you grew up and, you know, where did you go to school and everything like that? Right. Um, so I'm a Northeast Ohio um, guy. Um, I, I grew up um, uh, Broadview Heights, uh, Parma area. Um, I attended uh, pa- Padua High School. Um, from there, I went on to, uh, to Walsh University, uh, which is about a, a, an hour down the road, a little, little over an hour down the road um, in Canton, Ohio, right next to um um, the, um, the pro, uh, pro football hall of fame. Um, um, I was able to play a couple years of, uh, of soccer at Walsh university. Unfortunately, um, 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 the off season of my sophomore year had, a had a pretty bad injury. Um, the doctors wouldn't, uh, clear me, um, anymore to play. So that led me into, uh, kind of the, the coaching, uh, administrative, um, um, aspect uh, of, uh, of the game, if you will. And then from, uh, from, from Walsh, um, have been able, uh, and, and very fortunate to, uh, to coach and work at a lot of great, uh, institutions, um, NCAA division three, uh, NCAA division two schools. So, um, so very fortunate, um, and very blessed, uh, 
um, after uh, after the playing days were over to, to jump into uh, the coaching realm and, and really just um, meet um, and interact with, with a lot of uh, incredible people, uh, people that I've uh, coached with, uh, players that I've uh, recruited and coached and, uh, and coaches that I've uh, coached against and players that I've coached uh, against. So it's, uh, it's been a huge blessing. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, very familiar with the Canton area. We visit the Hall of Fame all the time. My wife's uncle is actually a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, Clark Hingle, Mr. Fullback for the Green Bay Packers. So nice. Uh, we we try to visit Canton as much as possible. Go see old right. uh, <laughs> old Uncle Clark. Uh, so, but yeah, that's that's awesome. And growing up and everything like that, I can relate with the sports injury. Uh, too as well. I was a swimmer in college, and after my sophomore year, I actually injured my shoulder in the middle of a race <laughs> that right. uh, was actually wow. going to be the one that was going to get me to make it on time to the Olympic trials in 2012. So uh, I definitely understand doctors not clearing you back to play yeah. and everything like that. So it's a yeah. tough reality, but you know what? It, it's a part of being an athlete. You know, it's. I've always right. said it's not if you're going to get hurt, it's when you're going to get hurt because it's right. just the nature of the beast, but it right. it, it definitely happens. So, uh, But like me, you actually come from a big family. So uh, what was it like growing up with so many brothers? Yeah, so um, four older brothers um, – um, it wasn't, um, it wasn't always easy. Um, there, there were a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot of days, especially, um, in, in our backyard, um, um, whether we were just running around or climbing trees or, you know, play, playing soccer or playing, playing another sport, um, um, one of us was usually coming inside the house with, you know, with something bleeding, uh, whether it was like an elbow, a knee, um, or uh, on a rare occasion, like a, like a, a bloody or a black eye. So um, my brothers and I um, were, were all real competitive, um, but you, you know what, I, I love them all. And, um, and you, you know, it's, it's, we, we just, we kind of got together um, over Christmas, most of us. And, uh, and we were just rehashing some of, uh, some of the days and some of the stories uh, of like, uh, of just playing um, in the backyard and growing up and doing some of, uh, some of the things that um, if I were to tell you, um, I'm not sure that would go over well. So, uh, but, but no, definitely, uh, de- definitely enjoyed uh, growing up with, with all four of uh, other brothers. Yeah, I, I can get it. I'm, I'm the youngest of three and I'm the only boy. So, uh, okay. know, two older sisters, I, you know, I, I wish I had that brother to, to go out into the backyard with, you know, play football sure. or anything like that. But, uh, sure. my one sister, she, she admits to this now, uh, but a little bit of a tomboy growing up. So, you know, got to throw some baseball around with her a little bit. Right. And so, uh, right. um, it was definitely a lot of fun, but yeah, there's, um, in my immediate family, there's 16 total of us. So <laughs> I understand coming from a big family and, and what that's like. Um, but you mentioned a little bit, you know, you went to, to Walsh University. You know, can you take us through a little bit of the recruiting process there? Because you didn't say you, you played soccer. And, and what was that like? And why did you ultimately decide on Walsh? Right. Um, so um, my best friend, um, when I was at Padua, um, he initially um, got, got, uh, got my interest into uh, Walsh. Um, um, Chris was being, uh, re- recruited, uh, for, for two sports, um, soccer as well as, uh, the track and field program. And, um, I remember him just, uh, telling me a lot of great things about, um, about the university, about, you know, some of the people, some of the coaches, the, the location, um, and just uh, some, some of the different academics, um, that were offered. Um, so, um, I, I remember, um, it was, um, it was my, my senior year and I had been on a couple college, uh, uh, visits, um, and it was, um, it was around early September of my senior year that I was planning on getting down to, um, 
Walsh University for, for a visit to see the campus and everything. And then, um, unfortunately, um, most unfortunately, um, um, my senior year, September, was uh, uh, the events of 9-11 uh, uh, transpired. Um, so that kind of pushed, uh, my visit back, um, um, uh, about a month, a little over a month. So when I went down there, um, um, I, I was a little bit, um, just anxious because now it's October of my senior year and, uh, and a lot of my friends already, um, in their senior year, they had a very strong, um, indication or, uh, of where they were, where they were going to attend college, um, or most of them um, were, were already committed to school. So um, going down to Walsh, I just remember I was, you know, you know um, I was thinking, man, what what if this doesn't work out, or what if this um, um, isn't the 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 place that you know Chris and I were, were talking um, uh, about it uh, as being. Uh, but as soon as I got on campus, as soon as um, I got on tour. Um, as soon as um, I, I got into the dorms and recognized some, some people I went to high school with and competed against uh, at the high school level um, and, and just really meeting a lot of the people, um, I, I knew um, that was the place that I really wanted to attend um, college. And then, um, you, know, you know, coming back from that, from having conversations with some of my older brothers, uh, with, with my mom and dad and just going through the, the FAFSA process, um, speaking with, with, uh, with, with coach me from, from the soccer team, um, and him finding out a little bit about me and me finding out, um, a little bit uh, about him and, and the type of program he was building. I, I just knew that that was really the place I, I wanted to be. Yeah. I mean, I wish with my sport being swimming that by October of my senior year that I knew where I was wanting to go. Being right. a swimmer, I got to wait to those winter months or, <laughs> or over right. Right. to really make my decision. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> I, the recruiting process is always different for every sport and, and every individual and every college. So I'm always interested to hear, you know, how that went for for different people. Swimming is it's a little different. Uh, you know, I had a bunch of schools looking at me. I mean, and if it wasn't for uh, actually being hurt my senior year of high school and not being able to swim because I thought playing football and swimming at the same time was a good idea in high school. Uh, in hindsight, it wasn't. Uh, right. But, right. you know, um, a lot of schools did drop their their scholarships, all except for Bethany College, which is where I ultimately went. Uh, but, you know, it was – it's – I don't want to say it's fun having schools actually reach out to you and telling you that they want you to come there and I guess actually being courted by them. So it's always uh, nice to see that and, you know, having that want is always a, sure. a good thing for sure. But you've had quite the coaching journey for sure, actually, after we're fast forwarding now after college and, you know, getting into coaching. So take us through a little bit about that, if you can, where you've coached and the positions you've had at each school. Right. So, um, so after I finished up, um, at Walsh University, um, I finished with my undergrad and actually ended up doing my, my graduate, uh, uh, schooling at, at Walsh, uh, from there, um, one, one of my best friends, um, and, and, um, and an amazing player, uh, got, got into coaching, um, uh, Steve Rose was, was the coach at Marietta College, um, and he um, he asked me to come down and, and join him and, and be his uh, assistant coach. Um, that was uh, going from uh, from Walsh um, to the NCAA uh, Division three level, where uh, where recruiting's a, a little bit different because obviously um, NCAA Division three um, no um, no athletic um, um, aid or, or scholarship, if you will, um, is is um, is afforded uh, to, to any of the student athletes um, at that level. So it was a little bit of an adjustment. Um, Marietta was a little bit of an adjustment, kind of a 
uh, a different town. But again, similar to Walsh uh, in the fact that there were a, a lot of great people um, on campus and, um, and, and in the city. So I um, enjoyed my time down there. Um, spent, spent a couple years down there in helping um, to, to develop uh, student athletes and get involved not just at the college uh, but, but but in the Marietta community um, as a whole. From uh, from there, um, um, when I was at Marietta, um, I had the opportunity during the summers to um, to work um, uh, some of the residential um, and development camps at Ohio Northern University and Ohio Northern at the time. I mean, and even uh, even um, today um, is uh, is uh, um, a, a top uh, to, uh, one, one of the top programs um, at the NCAA uh, D- Division three level. Um, um, when, when I was there, uh, Brent Ridenour was the coach, um, and and when when I got there, um, there was a young man by the name of. Chris Mateka, uh, who was one of the uh, better um, midfielders on the team, um, he's not now the head coach, and he continues to to do a great job there. Um, but when when I was at um, Ohio Northern, um, my first year there, um, we went on to uh, to win the conference uh, regular season, the the OAC conference regular season. Um, went on to win the the conference um, postseason tourney, and we made it all the way um, down to uh, to Texas um, uh, to the final four, and even uh, the national championship. Where unfortunately uh, we we lost in the national championship to uh, to Messiah College. Um, from there, then. Um, I came. Uh, I came back to uh, the Cleveland area. Um, two gentlemen who I just have the most amount of uh, respect for, uh, and I'm not sure you're going to find um, a- any better. Um, um, not just coaches and administrators, but but people. And uh, in uh, Mac McBride and Carl Nolan, um, they brought me onto their uh, staff um, at Notre Dame College. Um, and from from there. Um, really learned so much from, from there, uh, from, from both of them, uh, my, my first time, um, uh, in the office on the field, we're recruiting, um, different type of, uh, different type of meetings, different type of, uh, conversations, um, understanding, um, you, you know, um, different, uh, financial aid models, uh, different recruiting approaches, um, different administrative, uh, approaches, um, but you know, the, the number one thing that I took from both of them, from Mac and Carl was, um, how they go about, um, treating people, um, and, and how they, uh, c- communicate with, with people, which is, uh, which, uh, they, they turn into, uh, uh, an art form. Um, from there, both, both of, uh, both of those gentlemen, uh, as well as, uh, some of the other, um, administrators at Notre Dame helped, uh, propel me, um, to, um, to land me um, a head coaching position at Heidelberg University. Um, so going from Notre Dame, um, which is an NCAA Division II institution, to uh, back to the NCAA uh, D- Division Three realms. Heidelberg, uh, a little bit different, um, um, where um, that not in a... Not not in a major metropolitan city, um, if you will, where where Notre Dame is. Um, Heidelberg's located um, in Tiffin, Ohio, which is um, about uh, forty five minutes uh, south of uh, of Toledo, Ohio, and about twenty minutes uh, twenty minutes away from from Finley. But um, enjoyed my time at Heidelberg. Um, met some uh, met some incredible people there. Um, some some fantastic coaches, some some brilliant people in the athletics department and at the university, um, and was able to recruit some uh, some incredible uh, young men from uh, from the state of Ohio, uh, from from the Midwest, uh, from uh, from from Texas, and from from California. Um, and I was so fortunate um, at Heidelberg that. 
um, the the um, the previous coach, uh, the the gentleman who really built the program, um, Dr. Brian Haley. He was still um, at the university, and um, and um, Brian. Um, I, I like to think of him as Mr. Heidelberg. Um, he teaches at the university. Um, did, did so much uh, advising and mentoring and serving on committees and uh, and doing so much for the athletic department and did uh, a lot of uh, a lot of fundraising. Um, so it was great to have him um, there, a man of so so much uh, experience. Um, where you know I could kind of lean on him and just kind of have some conversations with him before you know some uh, some big matches uh, or in the off season and talk about the development of uh, of not just um, the student athlete but the entire uh, the the entire um, personal student and, and athletic uh, component. Um, so spent uh, spent a little over four years there and then uh, was able to come back to uh, to Notre Dame and join uh, Coach Nolan's staff. Uh, be his assistant coach and from uh, from there um, have kind of taken on a couple different roles um, at Notre Dame this year um, going from uh, from athletics into doing some uh, some teaching and doing some uh, work um, in in the um, admissions department working with uh, some transfer and international students so sorry, sorry for rambling on but um, that that's kind of uh, kind of how, how the journey's unfolded. No, I, I love it, and, and you're on the show with Ride Home Rants, so we we expect long winded answers. And, and right. So we're we're good right. with that, right? Uh, especially with you, know, like I said, you you've had quite the coaching journey, but you actually do know former guests of the show, Frankie Tall. So how did you get to know Frankie and know about Bethany College? Yeah, so. Uh, so Frankie and I, I uh, got a chance to know him um, when I would go down to Bethany um, um, in the in the summers, m- mostly uh, June and July, and and work the uh, the Bethany uh, Be- uh, Bethany uh, College um, University soccer camps. Um, and Frankie and I, I remember having a lot of great conversations with him and uh, a lot of conversations you, you know were not just uh, not just about soccer but just you, you know sharing uh, sharing you know how we can take lessons from uh, from the pitch and uh, carry it into uh, into life and, and recruiting and uh, and I would ask Frankie you know what what type of uh, what type of players or what type of um, what type of uh, tactics uh, or how, how he would like to set his teams up. He would have uh, similar questions and then um, just the ability uh, or I'm sorry, the, the opportunity to see Frankie run, run some of the sessions that he ran um, during, during the, the Bethany uh, soccer camps was, was awesome. So uh, I'm, I'm so happy that, that he's, uh, that he's down there at Bethany. Um, again, he, he, he's a Bethany guy. He absolutely loves um, the, the institution he loves um the student athletes he he gets to work with um he's he's done so so much uh for for the institution not just as a player but but now uh, as a coach so um so but bethany had themselves uh, a, a good one and uh and definitely um enjoy following him um when, when they're competing uh in conference play as well as especially um l- late october and uh in november when they get into uh the ncaa uh national tournament yeah, I've been following Frankie for a while since he's been on the show. You know, love Frankie to death and having been there and especially coaching and playing at my alma mater. You know, I definitely right. definitely follow them a, a good bit. I follow everybody that's been on the show. Uh, it's, right. It gets taxing at times. We're in, uh, this is going to be the, the first episode of season four. So we're on season sure. four. And I've had a lot of athletes and administrators and coaches and everything like that on. I do follow all of them. Uh, so it, it, it gets taxing at time, but I love it, and I love seeing the success of everyone that's been on. But, yeah, Frankie is just awesome. And Bethany soccer has always been always been up there in top notch and always defending for conference championships and in the national you know tournaments and everything like that. Uh, I even remember when I was there, I got to um, announce the uh, PAC soccer championship. I believe it was Bethany nice. versus Teal. And... Uh, 
I gotta say, we did not have a press box for me to sit in, so I was sitting up out in the cold in right. <laughs> December. Right. <laughs> Right. In the cold, right. So it was a, it was interesting experience, but it was it was a great one uh, for sure to to sit and watch that. For, and definitely glad Frankie's keeping up with the uh, the winning tradition at, at Bethany Absolutely. Soccer for sure. Now you're currently working at uh, Notre Dame College as a transfer coordinator in the admissions office. I mean, how do you like working in the admissions office and the admissions size of it? And can you let our listeners know, you know, what, what does your job entail? Yeah. So, um, so, so for first thing first, um, the opportunity to work with, uh, with, with Brandy, um, and, and John is, is awesome on a day to day aspect. Um, one of the cool things about Notre Dame, it's, it's cool. Uh, but, but also stressful at the same time, uh, we have to wear so many hats, um, with, with us being a, a small, uh, private, uh, in- institution. Um, so, um, I, I know, uh, Brandy and John are always, you know, r- rushing to, uh, to, to different meetings and, and different committees and things like that. Uh, but, but coach Nolan, um, um, Carl and I, um, Carl, in addition to, uh, to coaching, um, the soccer program is also, um, um, the director of, uh, of international admissions. Um, so still having the opportunity to work with him, um, not just in, uh, uh, an athletic component, but work with him, uh, in helping work, recruit, uh, young men and women, um, who are outside the, the game of soccer and help bring them to Notre Dame to get a quality education is, um, is, is something of a, of a bonus, um, um, so in, in addition to, uh, to doing, um, tra- transfers and getting to, uh, you know, community college, um, events and, and, you know, whether it's, um, um, Cuyahoga community college, um, or, or some, some of the other schools, Lakeland community college, um, um, the, the best thing is, um, always getting out to, uh, to interact with, with different people, um, and hear their stories and hear, um, how they came, uh, to, to be in higher education, um, and then the ability to recruit, um, young men and women who, you know, may not just be coming from, uh, from Ohio, but maybe from the Midwest or from the, the West Coast or from, uh, from overseas. Um, it, it's, it's awesome to, to hear those, uh, uh, the different perspectives and different stories. Yeah, um, that I, I definitely understand. The, you know, wearing the the many different hats as uh, not the same, I guess, but as a comedian, you know, I, I'm I'm not just up on stage slinging jokes uh, all day. Uh, I do wear uh, many different hats, in that you know, I, I have this podcast, I have a merch store, I got to run, I have a website I got to keep up with, I got right. a coffee brand. You know, it's just. Yeah. Everyone sees the final product and they're like, oh, you're a comedian. You work like an hour a day. That must be the right. easiest job on the planet. It's like, no, it's the right. easiest thing. You, you see, you see yeah. the hour that I cut everything down to to prepare right. these jokes and then going to open mic nights to do to test out the jokes and everything like that. And yeah, so it is, it, I definitely understand it. And the only person I know that could do that would probably be Johnny because I wish I had a third of his energy. I, I, yeah. I, I, I love him to death, but there's times when it's like, too, can we just like pump the brakes a little bit? Right. Like, <laughs> but right. wouldn't have him any right. other way. Uh, and I'm sure working with him, you're, uh, you're definitely in the same boat with that and dealing with that energy on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. John, John is always on. He's, He's, he's always a hundred percent. Um, that's, yeah, you know, that, that's, that's one of his, uh, his strengths. Um, and, and he brings, uh, he brings a cool energy, uh, to, to the office, um, uh, especially on Halloween. Oh, I'm sure. He yeah. loves Halloween for sure. Yeah. Uh, so take us through a little bit, you know, why should students choose Notre Dame college to attend? Yeah, I, I think there's uh, there, there's a lot of uh, re- reasons why um, Notre Dame College would appeal to um, to a lot of different uh, students uh, or and student athletes. Uh, number one, I would say is the people. Number two, I would say is the location. With us being, you, you know, 
depending on how you drive um, <laughs> five, five, five to ten minutes away from uh, from downtown Cleveland. Um, there, there's so much to do in and around um, the, the the area of uh, of Notre Dame and, and where the campus um, is located. Um, the 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 third thing I would say. Um, um, kind of it's a continuation of, uh, of my second answer um, is there's a lot of colleges around um, Notre Dame. Um, there, there's there's John Carroll, there's Cleveland State, there's uh, there's Baldwin Wallace, and then there's uh, Lakeland Community College, uh, and I'm sure there's a couple other ones that that I'm forgetting to mention. Uh, which means there, there's a lot of uh, students and a lot of student athletes, um, in you, you know um, that that have a lot of similarities um, that that you can that you can hang out with uh, and bond with and and, and learn from. Um, the 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 last item um, that that I would uh, uh, state. You know, Notre Dame College, with, with its uh, st- strong history uh, and with its uh, with its Catholic foundation, um, I feel like it's it's moved um, into uh, into uh, you, you know uh, an opportunity where we have uh, students and we have student athletes who are not just from the state of Ohio, not just from the Midwest, but from all over the country, and then we have over a hundred um, um, students. Um, who come from uh, come from uh, across the pond? Uh, come from uh, countries of England, Ireland, uh, Germany, Brazil, um, Australia, um, j- just to name a, a couple. So um, again, the opportunity to work with um, young men and women and hear their story of how they came to Notre Dame and what they're looking to get out of Notre Dame and what they're looking to contribute to Notre Dame. Um, it's it's just a uh, it's it's a fascinating uh, place that provides such a unique opportunity uh, for for men and women, literally from from all over the world. Yeah, that's it, that sounds like an amazing place to to be and to and to go. I honestly wish I would have known about it when I was choosing a school and everything like that. Right, like right. A we do have a pool on campus too, you know. So hey. feel free to come up on campus and get a couple laps and. I don't even know if my shoulder would allow me to do a couple of right, anymore. Right. <laughs> I would love to be able to do it. Trust me. I do miss the water, even though I'm, you know, at 34, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, I've been out of, I've been out of the water now coming up on 20 years and it's, yeah. it's, it's still tough um, to do sure. that. But you know, what you're, you know, what's it, you have a, like you said, you wear a lot of different hats. What's it like being a dad, a husband, you know, with coaching and everything like that? Where do you find that balance? Yeah. Um, I'm probably glad you're asking me and not my wife. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, it, it is definitely not easy. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of fun and I find it rewarding, um, um, when I'm able to be, uh, when I'm able to be on, um, the, the field and then, um, when, when, if it's a training session or after a match, uh, I get to see, uh, my, my kids running across, um, the, the field and, and give them a hug. Um, and, and, uh, and my wife who is so incredible and so supporting and, um, who, you know, who will come to games that are not in the, the most, um, ideal, um, weather conditions. Um, and she'll, um, oftentimes say to me, you know, why can't you coach an indoor sport? Um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's awesome to, to have that strong, uh, support network, uh, from, from my, uh, from my loving wife and, and two awesome kids. Um, just, just quick story. I remember my my first year um, at Notre Dame, um, where our benches are located. Um, the the fans are um, are literally right uh, behind uh, the the benches. And I remember um, there was a there was a tough conference match uh, we we were playing, and um, and the the head coach uh, Carl Nolan, um, he was um, he was having. Um, um, I'll use the term uh, a delicate word um, with with uh, with, with uh, officials and, and some of the players, um, and I just uh, I just remember um, when he turned around. Um, I'm sitting on the bench. He turned around, and there's um, 
there's kind of uh, the 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 stands behind us. He turns around, and there's um, there's my my, uh, my daughter who at the time was uh, was two years old, um, Lucy, and he just turns around and he goes, "Pat, there is no mistaking that that daughter of yours." is absolutely uh your your child um and that was just that was just awesome for uh uh an awesome moment i'll never forget like during the heat of the competition um uh, such a tough competitive conference match we were playing in you you could feel the tension between uh, the two sides carl turns around and you know he cracks a, a statement cracks kind of like a, a joke if you will like that to kind of just like loosen all of us up and uh from that moment on i i remember um we, we kind of ended up smashing um the opponent i won't say who uh but it, it's cool to, to have family um involved uh whether it's you know, you know, NCAA athletics or, or you know, cl- club sports, uh, training sessions, games. Um, it, it's it's awesome to to uh, to to have them come out and and to see you know to to see what what I do for a living. Um, and then you know, um, it's a tough position uh, that that I put my wife in, um, where she's doing a lot of um, um, the 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 raising of the kids and doing a lot of the, the bedtime um, while, while we're on the road traveling through West Virginia or Pennsylvania or other states. So um, there is absolutely no way um, I would be able to do this w- without her. Um, so I'm, I'm just so blessed um, all around and, and really, uh, really appreciative and, and really thankful for it all. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know what a crazy schedule could be like in, you know, having a son myself, there's times when I wish he could come and see what I do being a comedian. He's always asking, like, can I come? Can I come? I was like, dude, you're 14. I can't knowingly take a 14 year old into a bar right right now to do a comedy show. I can't. Right. Right. You're close. A couple more years. (laughs) Excuse me. Getting over (laughs) the wonderful time of the year cold. Uh, But yeah, it's just, but yeah. He he asked all the time, "Hey, can I come to the show?" It's like, dude, I, unfortunately, no. And yeah, I can't. I, yeah. I can't bring you to this one. But soon right. enough, he's he, he's getting to that age where it's, he's going to be able to come, and I can't wait for that to have him there. Mainly right. because I know he he's like me; he's very quick witted, and I know he's going to heckle me throughout the show. I just know it's going to happen, just knowing sure. his personality and how he is. Sure. Uh, so. I actually can't wait for that. I've been preparing for this day, that day, <laughs> right? And over right. to to make him regret heckling old dad on stage. So sure, <laughs> um, sure. But yeah, I definitely get it too as well. But um, now you said Notre Dame, or yeah, you said it was Notre Dame. Though the fans were literally right on top of you. Um, that, that, yeah, that's correct. His uh, football stadium where in his high school is the same way. Like you, the fans right. are literally right on top of of everybody and you know it's it's nice to be that close to him and you know get to experience the fans but I'll tell you yeah, he is the worst injured player that could be on the field he he was always turned around like hey uh can you get me a drink like you have water bottles right there turn around be with your team right. like, why are we talking right now we should not be talking right, <laughs> right. now and right. yeah so I, I definitely get that it's, it's a lot of fun but Pat, we are running down near the end of the episode here. Uh, I do have to get this one last segment in. Uh, otherwise, sure. the wonderful manager of the podcast, Johnny Fitty Falcone, will kill me if I don't. And that is the <laughs> Fast Fitty Five. Five random questions from the wonderful manager of the podcast, Johnny Fitty Falcone. And I, I got to tell you, Pat, he sent these to me today. Uh, so uh, I get these the last minute, just like everybody else. And uh, they have nothing to do with what we've been talking about for the entire okay. of the show. So for the new listeners out there, this is kind of rapid fire, but you can elaborate if you need to. So if you're ready, Pat, we'll go ahead and get started. Well, let's do it. Okay. Question one, what would be harder to live without hot water or no electricity? Electricity. Yeah. yeah that's, that's kind of a toss up for the first one. Yeah. Question number two is ice cream better in a cup or a cone? Cup. cup. Okay, cup. Yeah, you, you you can you can put more in a cup as opposed to a cone. 
Okay. I, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> and, and, and as well as, you know, with it being in a cup, you can add, you know, uh, you know, chocolate sauce, caramel sauce, uh, sprinkles, um, different types. You can just add so much more when it's in a cup um, as opposed to uh, a cone. So, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Question number three. Who was a better performer, Elvis or Michael Jackson? Uh, that, definitely, uh, definitely the king, Elvis. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with that one, too, as well. And, okay, this this one is such a fitty question. All right. I, bear with me on this one. Right. <laughs> Who wins in a fight? Four regular guys or 50 emperor pe- penguins? Keep in mind, the fight is... Wait, they, 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 okay. the key is you're fighting them in a locked, empty house, which you cannot escape. Let me get through that again without having to reread that. <laughs> so who wins in a fight? Four regular guys or 50 Emperor Penguins? The key is you're fighting in a locked and empty house and you cannot escape. Wow. Um, well, normally I would say the four guys, but, but. With uh, with with you donning the the, the penguin shirt, you know, and and us talk, talking penguins hockey, I you know I I gotta go with the penguins right now. Absolutely. <laughs> and last question. Now this one, this was actually right up your alley. Uh, could the best D three college soccer team in the USA beat the worst D one college soccer team? Yes. Okay. That, yeah, I, I was interested to hear that. But, yeah, I mean, I think anybody can win at any point in time, depending on the sport, no matter what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the Fast 55. Other than that Emperor Penguin question, I mean, that was pretty easy questions for you there, Pat. Uh, right. <laughs> He's, he's had a strange obsession with animals with these questions. <laughs> There's always at least one animal question right, in all of them. Right. And, and I'm, I, I'm just curious, and, and maybe, you know, you, you can ask John, like, when or, or how does he go about even coming up, come up with some, some of these questions? I've, um, I've asked him this for years because I've known Johnny since college at Bethany, and he was like this in college. He would just come up with these random scenarios in his head, like, all right, you're locked in a room. It's you, Conor McGregor, and Batman. Who comes out alive? Like, it's just like, why do you come up with this? He's like, right, it's just the way my right. mind works, man. So it's just awesome. Because <laughs> he, yeah. he will even randomly text me these questions, just like, not five, but he'll just, I'll just be sitting there, I hear my phone ring, and I'll look down, and it's it's Johnny, and it's just like, I got a real good question for you, and it's always something like that, it's just, it's always fun to do, but yeah, he, right. it's just the way his mind works, is his answer that he's given me. Right, right. But Pat, uh, like I said, we are running down near the end of the episode here, I do give every guest this opportunity at the end of every show, so if there's anything you want to get out there, whether it's you know, promoting NDC or anything else that you want to get there, or even if it's just a good message, I'm going to give you about a minute and the floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, honestly, um, don't, don't really have anything to promote. Um, I would just take the opportunity with, uh, with, um, the, the new year, uh, a couple days away to take the opportunity, um, to wish everyone a, a happy and blessed new year, um, and take the opportunity to, um, to thank everyone, um, in our, um, armed forces and our first responders and for everyone who's, um, who's out there, um, sacrificing, um, so that we can have, um, the, um, the, the quote unquote, Holly Jolly Christmas and, and safe Christmas and safe new year. So, um, so thank you, um, to, to all, uh, to, to everyone who is, uh, who is sacrificing, um, and, uh, allowing us, um, to, to do what we love to do. Um, and, and thank you, uh, for, for having me on the show. Really, uh, really appreciated, uh, the, the time and, uh, and enjoyed it thoroughly. Absolutely. I, I, I love it when people have a good message. I'm all for helping people promote, but, you know, I'm a big supporter of the armed forces and our troops and the first responders. Uh, I love it. That's why I partnered with 
that you heard at the beginning of the episode, uh, one of the sponsors, Tactical Brotherhood. Uh, all of the, not all of the proceeds, but most of the proceeds from every purchase goes to helping support veterans and our first responders and our military. So big supporters awesome. into those. Uh, for everyone out there, go out and Patriot 15 will get you 15% off your purchase. Use the link in the description to go there. All of it goes to a good cause. You won't be disappointed with these products for sure. Also, uh, since we are into the sponsorship reads, I do have to mention that everyone, now that the holiday season is since gone, sit down and finally relax with the craziness now being over of the holidays with a nice hot cup of Bono's Brew, my own personal coffee brand, Bono's Brew. Use the promo code Ride Home Rants, and I will give you 10% off of your first purchase. This is the best coffee I have tasted in a long time. It is the freshest beans made right here in the USA, in Illinois, and California. You won't be disappointed. I have a plethora of flavors that you could try out there. I have actually saved money from brewing this coffee and doing it that way rather than the K-Cups in the Keurig. Although I do have Paws and K-Cups if you want to go that route too as well. Bono's Brew, check it out. Link in the description or bonosbrew.myshopify.com. Get yours today. That is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. I want to thank my guest, Pat, for coming on. This was a lot of fun talking to you, getting to learn about your coaching history and Notre Dame College and everything like that that goes along with it. As always, if you enjoyed the show, be a friend, tell a friend. If you didn't, tell them anyways. They might like it just because you didn't. That's going to do it for me, and I will see y'all next week. The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. Energy drinks made for gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. For gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. Go to the link in the description where you can find the best energy drinks out there. Less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Also, no jitters and no crash afterwards. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my favorite sponsor of the show, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel made for the everyday golfer. We might not go out and shoot a six under par. We're probably going to shoot a six over par, but this is going to give us the gear that's going to help us rock it on and off of the course. Go to the link in the bio, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get yourself 10% off there as well.